My name is uh, Prem Jain. I'm the CEO of Pensando Systems. My name is Sony Giandani. I'm the Chief Business Officer at Pensando. In the cloud, there is a need for acceleration of the infrastructure because for virtualizations, for containers, as well as for bare metal. And that was the second thing which we saw that we can provide that scale, we can provide the low latency, we can provide all the network services feature which don't exist uh, in any device per se. The, the other trend that we did see in the service provider space was that while there was a usage of commodity servers and the whole notion of SD-WAN, NFV services running on the compute environment, there was also a dire need for the acceleration of these services and the ability to bring multiple of these functions together in a distributed manner more closer to the edge. And that the scale was a completely different number, particularly when you look at AI or when you look at 5G types of environments, it, the scale becomes a very important aspect. So solely relying on volume servers would not be the solution. So the, this consistent trend, which was more towards specialized silicon and the ability to have deep programmability and the ability to go meet the architectural shifts occurring in the enterprise, in the cloud, and also in the service provider space. There were, it was happening across the, across the various infrastructure stacks. So in our case, we said, okay, data plane, we want to do it as fast as possible for meeting the objectives, which we told you that we need to get, make sure highest performance possible, lowest latency possible, and jitter also on the latency, very controlled uh, jitter. Power-wise, also make sure that it is uh, suitable to go into any right. server. The separating out the control plane, data plane, and the control plane, we added the uh, ARM processors okay. in, in our design also. So yeah. that control plane management plane can come through this. Yes. And then the data path from the host to the network mm -hmm. or from network to the host can be processed uh, you know, very fast with a programmability. Yeah. Policies, the way we have defined it, is the same as being done in the cloud. And that API is basically is used to define these policies to turn on the order anywhere mm -hmm. you want. You can define the policy here. And we become the gate for security. Mm -hmm. We become the gate for all these services, whether they are allowed to talk to the other, other device right. or not. Yeah. And they're all driven by policies and that is done at a high level. And that is what I was talking about management plane. There's another aspect to this architecture where we didn't think about security as an afterthought, right. but we embedded it as part of the design. So whether it is the whole notion of a hard gap, right. and so when you insert our technology within a server, it provides a hard gap between your workloads and your right. operating environments and right. your network infrastructure. Yeah. So there's a mm -hmm. lot of embedded security that was also built into mm -hmm. the platform. Uh, even before you turn on additional security services, whether it's encryption, de decryption, whether it's stateful firewalls or whether it's IPsec or any variety of these functions, we also embedded a lot of security within the platform that we call as the hard gap. And it is needed uh, both in the case of bare metal because yes. you want to have the bare metal come and uh, you know change the configurations of the right. you know right. of this particular device. It's also needed because you want to have an isolation between the VMs. Other thing which you can do is also TLS. Container, you mentioned, uh, yes. you know, that between the containers, one group of uh, people saying, okay, the container to container communication since it's outside, I want to have it heavily protected. Right. So it means I want to use the TLS Correct. between the container to container. We can do TCP IP termination using these P4 engines. We can do the capability of using the encryption acceleration, which is we have built in. Right. Combination of the two, we can do uh, TLS, for the uh, security between the, uh, you know, the communication between the devices or outside even. The other thing which you can do is also for storage, we can run the classic NVMe and run over the TCP IP. I just have the NVMe driver and I need to connect to the storage in the backend, okay, or distribute the storage. It doesn't really matter, okay. That is also very powerful to put the storage wherever they want to do it right. and, then, and, and then share right. it. And nothing has to run on the on the host. If there is a trouble which is going to happen, how soon can I find it? And what tools is available to me? So we have put a lot of emphasis again right from the very mm -hmm. beginning mm -hmm. on telemetry, troubleshooting, and you know collecting all the data mm -hmm. which is really needed for accountability as well as for compliance right. as well as for down the road machine right. learning and artificial right. intelligence. 
The service provider is, we know for a long period of time. Yes. And the cloud is for the last 10 years and the enterprise forever. Yes. Uh, from that point of view. I think there is a need in all three segments for technology like this. Okay. If they need to grow their business, right. if they need to provide these services for this new capabilities, which is just coming on the horizon as 5G, IoT, right. uh, new applications, artificial intelligence, they want to collect all the data, all that kind of thing, and provide these services. Mm -hmm. So I think architecturally, this is a transition. Working very closely with our customers. I mean, that has been a core part of the DNA of the company. It wasn't innovation for the sake of innovation. It was really applicability of the innovation to go solve real-world problems. And that has been a core part of our strategy and will continue to be.